Hey guys, today we are going to read the third chapter of Box, or the third, the fourth chapter of Box of Shocks. In the third chapter, Oliver risked his life going to a very dangerous dog's backyard to get a spike. Uh, so let's find out what shock he's going to get this chapter. It's not easy adding to my box of shocks. Mom and dad keep track of where I am and what I'm doing pretty much every minute of the day. Finding opportunities to do crazy stunts and collecting new shocks for my box is really tough. It's December before I get my next chance. And remember his first shock he got at the end of October. So that's, that's a while. Right before Christmas every year, our family has this tradition of going on a sleigh ride with my aunt, uncle, and little cousins. We drive to a nearby farm and get pulled around on a sleigh by some Clydesdales. After the sleigh ride, we have hot dogs and hot chocolate by a huge bonfire. And then mom and dad always sing a duet of White Christmas. Mom says it's her favorite event of the Christmas season. I secretly kind of agree with her, but it gives me an idea. As everyone's getting their boots and jackets on, I say, I don't feel so good. I don't think I should go. Mom feels my forehead. You don't seem to be running a temperature. It's not my head, it's my, I don't say another word. I run off to the bathroom, slam the door, and make some pretty impressive retching noises. As I stagger out of the bathroom, Mom turns to Dad and says, the rest of you can go ahead. I'll stay behind with Oliver. No, no, after my great acting job, my plan may have backfired. You can't miss the sleigh ride, Mom, I say. I'll rest on the couch. There's a world's deadliest snake marathon on TV. You go ahead, Mom. I know how much you love the sleigh ride. I can see by the way my mom bites her lower lip that she's torn between going and staying behind with me. Ollie will be fine staying by himself, Dad says. He can always call you on your cell phone if there's a problem, and Grandpa Golly is close by. Right, Ollie? I could swear he winks at me, which is totally weird. I want to jump out, up and shout, Thank you, thank you, Dad! But that wouldn't look so good. Instead, I sprawl on the couch trying to look sick, but not too sick. Mom takes a deep breath and says, I suppose, but don't hesitate to phone if you feel any worse or if you have any problems or I'll be fine, Mom, I say. I just need some rest. As soon as the door, as soon as they're out the door, I jump up and run to the phone. I look up Ronnie Hooverman's number and punch it in. I'm in luck. Ronnie answers the phone. Hi, Ronnie. Ollie here. How much does it cost to visit Mr. Creepy? He tells me it's five bucks, so I run to my room, find my camera, and grab the money from my piggy bank. I check my watch and run over to Ronnie's place. Last year, our teacher, Mrs. Walmsley, told Ronnie he wasn't allowed to bring Mr. Creepy to school, even for pet day. That's because Mr. Creepy is a tarantula. Now is my perfect chance to pay him a visit. In some ways, this stunt's different from my visit to the Milburn house and Spike McChomp's yard. In this one, Mr. Creepy does all the work. I don't have to face a zombie or a crazy dog. But there is one thing that's very much the same. I'm a little bit terrified as Ronnie takes Mr. Creepy out of his terrarium and places him gently on my bare arm. Having a tarantula crawl along my arm is more than a bit freaky. It might not be quite as bad as when Spike McChomp tore my pants off or when the quasi-zombie gave me candy. Still, I'm not exactly in a happy place as Mr. Creepy crosses my elbow and heads up my arm. Of course, I'm not quite as freaked out as mom would be if she could see this deadly, bloodthirsty, giant spider crawling across my bare skin. She'd be screaming loud enough to break all the windows in the house. I get Ronnie to take a picture of Mr. Creepy on my bare arm. 
As soon as he's clicked the picture, I say, okay, okay, take him off now, thank you. Ronnie takes him off my arm. Thanks, I say, and don't tell anyone I did this, okay? I can trust Ronnie. He's not the most popular kid at school. In fact, most people think he's weird, so they don't pay attention to anything he says. I'm sure my time with Mr. Creepy is a pretty safe secret. When I get home, I use dad's computer to print the picture of Mr. Creepy crawling on my arm. I put my, I pull my box of shocks from its hiding place, open the lid and place the picture right next to the spike. With the box back in its spot, I'm pushing the wood panel black, back in place as my parents' van pulls into the driveway. Mom and dad continue to make it nearly impossible for me to add anything to my box of shocks. Not only do they have me in piano lessons, now they're making me take swimming classes, plus karate, and an extra study skills class on Saturdays. Every single minute of my life is filled with something they've organized. And if I'm not busy with lessons or school or homework, mom and dad always want to have what they call quality family time. They like to talk and they're always asking me about my school and my lessons and my friends and just about everything you can imagine. Once in a while, I'll manage to sneak my box of shocks out of its hiding place and look at the candy from the Milburn house, the spike from Spike McChomp's yard, and the picture of Mr. Creepy. Every time I look at them, it takes me right back to the thrill and the danger of each crazy stunt. And it makes me want to add even more things to my box of shocks. Finally, almost three months after adding the picture of Mr. Creepy, I get my next chance. Right before leaving for school on Friday, my teacher calls me and tells me that the next day's study skills class is canceled. They tell me, but they don't tell my parents. I don't tell them either. On Saturday morning, I leave the house when I'm supposed to, but instead of heading to school, I sneak off to Wally's Burger Barn. Mom says that you can get food poisoning from anything you order at Wally's. She says you can get food poisoning from just reading the menu. That's why I have to go and order a Wally Wowser burger, the biggest bur burger south of the North Pole. There are rumors that Wally mixes worms in with the beef and that someone found a fish eye in their fries. If mom knew I was chewing on a Wally Wowser burger and a mega basket of fries, she'd probably take me to the hospital to get my stomach pumped and force me to eat arugula and Krabby salads for the rest of my life. I gulped down the burger and fries in less than two minutes. Sure, the beef tastes a little wormish and there may have been an eyeball or two in the soggy fries, but it was worth it. I fold up the wrapper, slide it into my pocket and head home. I sneak around to the back because mom and dad are talking to the next door neighbor in the front yard. As soon as I get inside, I run up to my room and take my box of shocks from its hiding place. I carefully place the burger wrapper from Wally's in with the spike, the piece of Halloween candy and the picture of Mr. Creepy. As I slide the box back into its hiding place, I think about mom and dad would do if they heard about all the crazy things I've done. I, I would definitely be grounded. Probably for a year or two. For sure my allowance would be cut and they'd find a million other ways to punish me. But there's no need to worry. As I put the wood panel back in place and close the closet door. I know there's no way they'll ever find my hiding place. No one will. Sometimes I'm bursting to tell my friends all about my box of shocks and the crazy things I've done, but I can't. I can't take a chance on telling anyone, not even my friends. Even if only one other person knew the secret would spread like head lice. In no time flat, everyone would know, including my parents. As long as I'm the only one who knows about my box of shocks, my secret is safe. It has to say safe because there's still plenty of room in the box. I'm always on the lookout for another great stunt. But during the next three months, I've got soccer, 
and more swimming lessons, track and field, plus school and quality family time to keep me busy. I'm looking forward to the start of summer holidays because I have big plans. I'll be spending two whole months at Uncle Ned and Aunt Jean's farm. Mom and Dad will be in Toronto where Dad is teaching at a course at university while Mom takes some time at her accounting classes. They figure it would be much healthier for me to spend the summer on the farm than be cooped up in a tiny apartment they've rented in Toronto. Plus, mom thinks it'll be good for me to spend time with my cousin Stuart. I overheard her talking to her sister, my Aunt Jean, on the phone one night. Mom thinks Stuart would be a good influence on me because he's such a hard worker and always does what his parents tell him. I'm tempted to tell mom that even though Stuart and I are cousins, and even though we are exactly the same age, there is zero chance of us ever being real friends. If Stuart was in my class at school, I'd be out at lunch break shooting hoops while he'd be inside sharpening pencils for the teacher or making sure all of the toilets in the washroom were flushed. I don't say anything about Stuart to mom though. Putting up with Stuart for two whole months will be worth it. The farm is the perfect place for me to do all kinds of crazy stunts. By the end of the summer, who knows? Maybe my box of shocks will be filled right up. And that's the end of chapter four. All right, I hope you guys really like that. I am really enjoying this story. I've already always really enjoyed it. Tune in next week for chapter five. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I hope you're enjoying all the nice weather and going for lots of walks with your family. I'll see you guys later. Bye.